Ladies and gentlemen, kindly accept my deepest apologies for the delay. Um, I don't want to go into the details, but um, I had to have a lengthy phone interview. And I'm having a lot of interviews that um, I hadn't scheduled. You see, I'm not yet used to being president-elect. So kindly um, take my apologies. Over. It is just beginning. Fellow Ugandans, here in Uganda and abroad, I bring greetings to you. First of all, let me take this opportunity to thank all Ugandans for turning up in massive numbers to vote. We saw millions of Ugandans lined up to vote in different areas across the country. It was definitely unprecedented. Thank you very much for accepting our message to turn up in large numbers and vote. Thank you for taking seriously, very seriously, matters pertaining our country, Uganda. I also want to appreciate all the citizens for voting for change. I have no doubt in my mind that the vast, vast majority of you Ugandans voted for change yesterday. It was indeed a protest vote against General Museveni's murderous regime of blood and national shame. Now, General Museveni, aided by Mr. Biabakama, the chairperson of the Electoral Commission, other state institutions, and shamelessly, some media houses are trying yet again to usurp the will of the people of Uganda. The people of Uganda voted massively for change of leadership from a dictatorship to a democratic government. But Mr. Museveni is deliberately trying to paint a picture that he is in the lead. What a joke. Last night, even before counting was completed in some districts, NBS television started broadcasting results showing that General Museven was leading by 63%. Following a clear script, they hosted biased individuals and lend to lend credence to the outright broad daylight robbery of the people's victory. I want to remind all the media houses and other corporate companies and citizens that the citizens are watching and all of you who are participating in this conspiracy to defeat the will and victory of the people of Uganda will certainly face the consequences of your actions. Now, let me first of all remind all Ugandans about the illegal high-handed actions which Museveni and his regime of blood have undertaken to set stage for the worst rigging this country has ever experienced. requires us to give an agent of each candidate a copy of that form. It's not an option for the commission. It is a command of the law. And therefore, each candidate by now should have the declaration of results from, from all the 34,684 polling stations if they bothered to assign agents at those polling stations. Now, therefore, since Honorable Kiaguranyi is in possession of the 34,684 declaration of results forms. Let him show the country in what manner, in what form the results are rigged. As I said yesterday, the commission here are the last people to know the outcome because we can only get to know the outcome from each polling station as and when our returning officers from the respective districts transmit the results. Whereas the candidates are already in possession of the results on account of these DR forms. They already know. For us, we know we can only announce what has been submitted to us. So really, I, I do not see well, I do not see, I do not therefore appreciate the assertion that these results that we are reading out are rigged. 
at some of them and charged many of them in a military court before remanding them to Chitalia prison. These comrades had already taken on critical roles, not only on the campaign trail, but also supervisory roles on the election day. As the election drew closer, the regime stripped itself further naked. Their intentions were laid bare for everyone to see. First, they switched off social media to prevent Ugandans from communicating as well as following what was going on in the election. Many Ugandans managed to bypass this blockade and started using VPNs to access social media. Ugandans could then share videos of the incidents that were going on in the election. The regime had another problem on its hand. On the 3rd of January, we had announced the U-Vote application. This is the app which, which we had developed over time. We developed this app to enable us to receive results from across the country in record time. The app had other functionaries. Citizens would have been able to upload the videos and incidences that were going on in various parts of the country. Knowing that this would expose them to the world, the regime, in an unprecedented manner, moved to switch off the internet completely. And they indeed switched off the internet completely. If they had nothing to hide, why keep the citizens in the dark? Why keep the world in the dark? They denied accreditation to election observers, including the European Union and the United States. Museveni knew, that he was Museveni knew what he was planning to do. He could not stand an election being observed by independent poll observers. Local media houses were ordered not to report incidences of vote rigging and violence by the military against the citizens. Yesterday on election day, as the nation went to the polls and the regime engaged in incredible acts of violence and rigging, without credible election observers, coupled with intimidation or compromised local media, as well as the internet switched off, Museveni had a field day. As we have been saying, a week to the election, the military and the police conducted operations in different districts of the country where our sub-region and district leaders were arrested and kept in prison without charge. Many of them in the districts of Lira, Moroto, Bunyangabo, Bundibujo and very many others were arrested only to be released yesterday evening after the ele after election without any charge. Yesterday in Western Uganda and Northern Uganda, many of our polling agents were arrested and many chased away from polling stations. This happened in various counties and sub-counties of all districts in Western Uganda as well as areas of Northern Uganda. In Kamwenje, Minister Frank Tumwebaze ordered the arrest, ordered for the arrest of all our polling agents within the district. In Butalija, the eastern in Butalija, in the eastern region, Minister Irene Moloni ordered the guards to beat up all our polling agents and detain them. Let me make this unequivocally clear. Almost in the entire region of Western Uganda and Northern Uganda, there was actually no voting. We received thousands of calls and messages telling us how the election was a complete sham in those areas. In Bunyangabo, in Chitagwenda, in Kabale, in Rubanda, in Barara, in Churuhura, in Kazo, and Isinjiro, and many other districts, there was no secret ballot in most polling stations. The military gave people pre-ticked ballots. They gave them pre-ticked ballot papers. In other cases, some people were ordered to vote from the desk in the presence of everyone. In Kwania, in Bulambuli, in Karenga, and many other places, some ballot boxes were open and ballot papers were put in there. In several areas of Isinjiro, Kabale, Mbarara, 
and the districts of Karamoja, people were told that ballot papers for the president had, had already been ticked. They had on, all they had to do was to vote for their members of parliament only. Good enough, some of these irregularities were recorded on video. Although in some areas the military confiscated or destroyed the phones and cameras that were being used to record these grave irregularities, we have so much footage to share with the world. We know that the media was ordered not to cover such incidences, particularly the local media. And indeed, in many cases, media practitioners gave us information and evidence because they knew and they also still know that such information would not be allowed on radios and TV stations. 